What's happening, everybody? Jay Shock Blast here, and check it out. We have Thanos, and this is the best version of Thanos ever made. We are gonna do some side by sides of Thanos in another video, because everybody does the evolution of videos. So why not me too? Uh, so, but for now, we are gonna check out the brand new Thanos piece in Lego Marvel Superheroes 2. And it is easily the best. This is, I'm just spoiler alerting it right now. I'm going to do a new video as soon as Ant-Man and Wasp's DLC officially launches. And it is going to be my top 10 favorite characters in this game. And number one is easily going to be Thanos. They absolutely nailed it with Thanos in this game. And I, honestly, it makes the DLC worth the purchase just for this piece, $3 DLC. The Marvel's Infinity, uh, Avengers Infinity War level and character pack or character and level pack. It focuses on Dan Hickman's Infinity storyline. Look at that gauntlet, man. The Infinity Gauntlet. He does so many cool things. And that is one of them. Just boom, bringing down the hammer. Or the fist of doom so there you can see he has his chair uh that we ha all know him by from the movie uh the guardians of the galaxy movie i think is where we first saw him in the chair um but maybe it was actually avengers i don't know i can't remember right now i think it was guardians but in any event it's fantastic that he just sits here in this throne i actually have the hot toys piece that comes with his throne. No Infinity Gauntlet, obviously, but man, that just, ah, uh, jeez. The Infinity Gauntlet is like the, the coolest thing in the Marvel Universe. Like, the coolest accessory. You know, we think of Thor's hammer and Captain America's shield and Iron Man's armor and all those types of things. But realistically, the Infinity Gauntlet is it's just the be all end all it's what we always kind of fantasized at least me when i was younger growing up i always fantasized you know what would happen if um spider-man had the infinity gauntlet or you know what would happen if so-and-so had the infinity gauntlet you know and uh you know thanos by and large is is the most famous i would think for having held the infinity gauntlet I mean, obviously, Adam Warlock is probably a number two. Um, but, yeah, man. Like, not many people get to wield it. And uh, this this seems more appropriate for B Mr. Uh, Thanos. So, holding down the, you know, circle or B button. And you will get the uh, kind of laser effect. Um, obviously, he can lock on to... He can lock on can i not find a target to lock on to all right yeah so you can lock on to targets um he can basically do just about anything even when he's in his chair he he shoots out which is awesome it's more of obviously a laser i don't think it like breaks silver it does melt gold though so that is something to consider um also, obviously, he's got this great pounding effect where you can see all six of the gauntlet stones. And then he's got a super jump. <laughs> I love it. Uh, obviously, here with his, his daughter, Gamora, quote-unquote. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out his card. Thanos, no alias. <laughs> so look at that. Toxic gas, flight... Repair, smash, toxic goo, fire protection, electricity protection, heat, rune tracing, portal create, mind control, hyper jump, uh, strength, target, telekinesis, teleportation, wall climbing, oh wow, I haven't tried that yet, uh, time, and quick teleport. Thanos, the Mad Titan, is perhaps one of the most dangerous beings to have ever existed born a titanian eternal with a deviant gene he became obsessed with the entity of death 
and wishing to impress her, wiped out millions of his own people, including his own family. Few can equal his intelligent strength or lust for power, able to survive planet-destroying attacks without harm, along with his vast array of powers and abilities imbued by death herself. He is nigh unstoppable. He has wielded the Infinity Gauntlet and even the heart of the universe. First appearance, Iron Man, nine, number 55, 1973, is Thanos. I think they, like, threw handcuffs on him and arrested him. Um, like, that's a thing that happened. So let's actually go over to a building that he can possibly climb. I actually haven't tried that yet. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks weird. Ah. Anyway, um... So let me tell you about one of my favorite storylines in all of comics that involves Thanos. Uh, it's Annihilation. Thanos isn't like the, the main central figure of the story. It's not like the main bad guy of the story. It's obviously Annihilus. But he is basically playing Annihilus to do all the heavy lifting for him uh, as he's trying to... Uh, you know, get back in the good graces of death and, and all that stuff. Um, he then, once Nihilus is out of the way, you know, becomes a threat and an issue, uh, which leads us eventually into the Thanos imperative. With the Thanos imperative, uh, we end up seeing the quote-unquote death of Richard Ryder, a.k.a. Nova, and Star-Lord, you know, Peter Quill, um, there was a, there, there are a couple stories after Annihilation, uh, War of Kings, and then more specifically Realm of Kings. You know, that's kind of where Thanos really kind of kicked in. And there was a cancer verse, which basically had other versions of a lot of Marvel's, you know, heroes, but they were evil. Like, there was an evil Captain America, evil Iron Man, evil Thor, all those kind of things. And, uh, they were trying to take over the 616 universe universe and the their their universe was like collapsing around them uh you know nova and star lord saw an opportunity to trap thanos in there and thus killing him they thought it was their only opportunity and uh somehow they they kind of like back I don't know, like Clem. I don't know. I don't know how, like, how to how to really describe. It. They had a very poor description of how Thanos survived and how Star Star Lord survived, and then how you know Ryder ended up getting stuck in there. Uh, he eventually got himself out. I really didn't like the way that they tried to like tie it all together. I thought that was actually pretty poor. Um, they did their best to make it something, I guess. But I feel like there's a million other stories. It never made sense the way they did it, but I digress. Uh, Thanos is definitely my favorite villain in Marvel Comics. Um, I wouldn't say all of comics because I think I would put Atrocitus uh, just above him. But uh, he is that big of a deal. And they really did a great job with this character. We've seen him in all three LEGO Marvel games now. And this is clearly the best version. I don't like sleeveless Thanos in the grand scheme of things, but it's balanced off by having the gauntlet there. Oh, there's one other thing I did want to show you guys. So, you know, a lot of the characters have their little effects that they do when they get into a, a fight. And there should be some characters to beat up over here. All right, yeah, so... Breaking us out of that old shack. It wouldn't have been so bad in there if it at least had a TV. Uh. All right, ready? Here it is. Bam! <laughs> you gotta love it, man. Like that. That's just so cool. I don't know that he really has any team-ups, but obviously you can see here I didn't show his, like, quick teleport. And if we could go into some, like, rune tracing or whatever, I mean, it would be the same as what, like, Doctor Strange does and stuff like that. So, uh, I think people are really going to love this character. Uh, they're really, really going to love 
uh, this aspect of the DLC. Keeping in mind, this was the only character that was ever alluded to, hinted at, promised as part of this DLC. I'm I'm honestly thrilled with it. It's a great pack. I hope everybody that has a season pass uh, enjoys it for what it is. And if you haven't bought the season pass and you're just waiting for this DLC, $3 for Thanos alone makes it worth it. So anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed the video and we'll see ya.